What's up, everybody? It is back, baby. It is the return of Mud Tips. I'm your host, Sean Taylor from the Made Up Theater. And heck, let's jump into today's topic, how to make arguments work in improv. Let's face it, we've all been in argument scenes before, right? When you just feel stuck in a stalemate with your scene partner, you both have very different points of views or different objectives in the scenes, and thus it leads to an argument back and forth where nothing happens, nothing evolves. But this is improv, this is theater. We can make these scenes not only entertaining for the audience to watch, but also fun as heck to play in. So let's get into some tips about how to make arguments work. One of the more effective techniques to help sustain your argument in an improvised scene and make it work is to accept the truth and build upon it. Oftentimes, improvised arguments, they devolve into nothing more than bickering with the word but. But is anti-progress. When somebody starts a sentence with the word but, it's deflecting and opposing a choice without building upon it. You just stay stuck on this even ground rather than going into the heavens or wherever your destination is. So we have the common philosophy of yes and in improv, right? It seems kind of weird to use in an argument, but why can't we use it, right? It's essentially the improvisers agreeing to disagree. So if your scene partner comes on stage and is, there, is your father or something and says, hey son, looked out back, I noticed my Mustang has a big dent in it. Boom, that's an offer, right? It's initiating possibly an argument. So the best thing you could do is maybe just accept the reality. Sure, you can lie about it, but why not just accept it right away and say, yeah, dad, maybe if you had taught me how to drive last Sunday, I wouldn't have done that, you know? And then boom, you have like a nice, emotionally effective line to your scene partner. And yeah, it could turn into an argument, but we're building upon a premise rather than deflecting ideas back and forth with the word but. Try it out maybe. See if you can have an argument with a scene partner and start every sentence with the word and and see if it just build it to a really cool spot that you couldn't have got there with the word but. A big aspect of arguments in improvised scene that is absent generally is just a sense of play, right? Because we're emulating reality where real arguments, hey, they're not very fun, right? It's two people yelling back and forth at each other. But this is our stage, this is improv. We can make these arguments fun and playful. So this is all about just using your environment, right? Have you ever been in a scene where you start with your partner and you start immediately in an argument and you have no idea where you are? You might think, oh gosh, this scene's done, it's over. No, make a deliberate choice to go use something in the environment. Like maybe you just stop the argument and walk over and grab some water because you're thirsty and you establish that there's a water cooler. Boom, we've established that maybe there's an office, that's a gift. Your scene partner might respond by going and checking his email. Boom, you've established a computer and a desk. You have a playground that you've established. It might escalate to your scene partner walking over and picking up the computer, unplugging it and throwing it out the window. That's all play. And it gives your partner something to react to that is a physical choice. So make more physical, specific choices on stage to enact that play. Another way to not feel stuck in a scene is to heighten and be willing to change. There's an emotional scale in improv and in acting of like one to 10. You know, one being subtle, 10 being extreme. And a lot of argument scenes I see are two people on stage having an argument and they're at about a level three anger. No one's really rising in their anger. No one's really lowering. So they just feel stuck in that emotional number, right? They're stuck there. So get out of being stuck by being affected on stage. If your partner says something to you, let it impact you and let it elevate or decrease your emotional level to a point where a change might happen. So for example, if you're having an argument with a sibling in a scene about like maybe they've been using your Nintendo 64 without your consent, like heighten it, get angrier, get angrier. What else have they been using? Let that impact you more and get you more and more angry to the point where you might say a line like, I wish you were never born, boom. That gives your partner a gift. That's something they have to react to and it might cause them to change. They might start to get sad or introspective and boom, you have a nice solid change in the scene that was earned and it causes you, you were at a level 10 anger. You realize, wow, I just said something really screwed up and it causes you to possibly change and thus you reach another beat within the scene. So heighten emotions, let them naturally evolve and be willing to change. And one more last thing that coincides with being willing to change, and that's being willing to lose. Think about it, in a real argument, you have a goal. I wanna win this argument, right? I wanna be victorious at the end of the day. But on stage, 
The audience wants to see some closure. They want to see a loss happen as well as a victory. So it helps to choose to lose. If your partner says something to you that causes a change in you, where you realize the error of your ways or realize that you've lost this argument, accept the defeat. A great way to practice this with your team is to get a big open area. Split your team up into two teams. So half on one side, half on the other, and make like a volleyball court. You can get some tape to designate the boundary lines or get some cones and make a line right in the center to designate where the net is. And they're gonna play the game of volleyball, but they're not gonna use a ball. They're gonna use mine. See how it evolves over time. At first, they might be stubborn and try to win every single point and the ball will go back and forth for like minutes upon minutes. But then that choice that happens at some point where someone says, hey, let's lose this round. Boom, suspense starts happening. It's now a game worth investing in. It's a really great activity to establish group mind and acceptance, but also helps being willing to lose. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this episode of Mutt Tips. Thank you so much for checking it out. It's good to be back. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, comment with somebody you would like addressed in a future video, subscribe on YouTube, share the video. It's all very helpful. I'll see you next time for another episode of Mutt Tips. Bye.